My 18-year-old daughter blamed me for her pregnancy and vanished after I refused to raise her child. Here's my real question. My daughter is now 18, pregnant, and seems to have lost her goddamn mind. Or I'm an asshole. You choose. This year has been a struggle. She wanted to take a break here before she goes to community college, but can't keep a job. Apparently, retail situations are too phobic against her non-binary state. My child looks slash acts slash dresses exactly as a young adult female BTW. When I ask how people are being phobic against her she gets as prickly as a cactus so I really don't know the details. She's been through four or five jobs this year. She won't consider call centers that aren't face to face because she doesn't like to talk on phones, and is apparently looking for a remote job without any luck. She's been a nymph, Lloyd since Thanksgiving, she quit her last job on Black Friday, in fact, and I was on the verge of laying down the law, telling her she either needs to go to school this upcoming semester full-time or get a full-time job or move out with her friends. But now she's come to me and she's five months pregnant. She's very angry at me, says it's my fault because, one. I didn't put her on puberty-blocking hormones when she came to me two years ago. She believes I am in fact trying to feminize her by getting her birth control. The pill. She's been throwing her prescription away. This is where I might be the asshole. I called her a little idiot. We don't use that sort of language in my house, and I never call people names, especially my own child, but at that moment I could just see red. The hormone thing is a non-issue emo because this is the first time I ever heard of her wanting hormones. What was I supposed to do? Go back in time. As for the birth control. It's also the first time I'm hearing anything about this. There are non-pill options that don't have estrogen. If that was her want, all she had to do was ask and I would have driven her to the doctor myself. Or she could have taken the car she has and done it. She has her own medical card, even. Though to be fair, I don't know how she would have managed the copay without a job. I know for a fact her old high school gave out free condoms like candy because her friends were always giggling over flavored sample packs and even blew a few of them up like balloons and around the house one time. She had all the birth control she could ever want and used none of it. It gets worse. We're way past the date of abortion, again, I would have helped her if this had been her wish. We live in an abortion-protected state and can afford it. She's known she was pregnant since about two months and has come to think of her baby like a sibling. She expects me to raise it like it was mine. That this is my duty, in fact, Beck, she says it is my refusal to accept her non-binary state that led to her being pregnant. So she was going to get a brother or sister and I was going to have another child. You can say my language grew. Sterner. Versions of get your head out of your ass and congratulations, mommy, you have some hard decisions to make and I said I would absolutely not raise her baby for her. She also refused to say who the father was. Now that I've cooled down I'm really hoping she has a secret boyfriend. She does have some friends who were born male, but now also don't identify that way. We didn't even get there as I lost my mind when she said she thinks of her own baby as a sibling and wants me to raise it like my own child. She's locked herself in her room loudly wailing. I feel like crap warmed over. She's been in there for 12 hours and as she has an attached bathroom probably won't be coming out until she gets hungry. Considering it's been half a day I think she has snacks stored. I also don't know where to go from here. Being pregnant sucks and messes with your head, so I'd like to blame that and the fear she must be feeling, but I have the bad feeling I either raised a spoiled brat or someone with an emerging personality disorder. So I need to know from people who aren't emotionally involved and maybe some people who are more in tune with this whole non-binary thing than I am. What do I do to help while also making her responsible for her own child? How can I help my daughter except she must do basically the most feminine thing you can do, give birth and possibly breastfeed, while being sensitive that she's non-binary? Am I just a big asshole here? Typing all this out it feels like my daughter is lost in crazy town. I'm still not raising her baby but at what point do I drag a legal adult to the hospital? I told her she needs to work out details if she wants to adopt with the father, and she was welcome back home when she had a plan in place. It was short because I heard her on the way out. I think she just meant to leave without saying anything. Thank you for your kind comments and advice, Reddit. I'm going to sleep. First update 5 most ago in r slash ada hi, this is an update to this post, long story short my 18 year old nb daughter wanted me to raise her baby, and she told me she thinks the baby as her sibling. We had a blowout, she locked herself in her room for most of a day, and then took off with her friend slash her lover, so this happened a few days ago but I didn't update because I needed to get my head around it. It still doesn't make sense. Daughter finally unblocked me. She and the person who got her pregnant wanted to talk to me at a public place. We chose IHOP. Although I suspect that I knew who her lover was, I was disappointed to find out because they had been a part of my daughter's friend group since high school and was the only one I ever had a problem with and kicked out of my house. 
They are trans now, but two years ago the friend group was watching a movie in the living room, and every time I'd pass by he, he was a he then, would lock eyes with me and make really obnoxious, loud, orgasm sounds like that scene in Harry Met Sally. I told him to knock it off and grew sterner when he did it again. Then when I was in the kitchen he somehow snuck up behind me and was miming jack-off movements with his hand. I turned around and caught him at it. He was still fully clothed, but it was startling and freaky. I kicked him out. So now I'll just call them sperm donair because that's what they are. I'm still calling my daughter my daughter and she because I still haven't been told not to buy her otherwise. So get off my case on that. Anyway, the IHOP meeting was a shit show. Sperm Donair sat with my daughter and went on the attack. Sperm Donair's points were. 1. I was poisoning my daughter by making her take birth control. I only helped her get the prescription and would have done everything I could if I knew she didn't want to take the pill. There are other methods, too. It will take years to fix my daughter after all I did. Not giving her hormones even though I had no idea that was what she wanted. She dropped even wanting to change her pronouns after a few weeks. 3. Abortion is a sin and I am a monster for suggesting it. It's past the date anyway. 4. I am further abusing her by not taking care of the baby while she fixes herself. I guess they meant it as a temp situation which was also new to me, so apparently even though I'm an abusive monster, a bad mother, and so on, I'm even worse for not taking in their baby. At least no one suggested that I raise it like my daughter's sister anymore. That might have been my daughter's thought on it. Sperm Donair did most of the talking while my daughter just sat and glared at me, nodding along. It was kind of a whirlwind, Sperm Donair pounded the table a few times, and even the waiter knew not to bother us after drinks. LOL. I'm surprised we weren't asked to leave. There was a lot said, mostly by the Sperm Donair who really seemed to be steering the ship. I asked why Sperm Donair couldn't take care of the baby and Sperm Donair said his parents were even worse than me. I guess my daughter and Sperm Donair taking care of the child they created is out of the question. I told them that I would not be raising their baby for them and adoption is the best bet. They said that if I don't agree to raise it, they'll make sure I'll never see the baby ever. I won't raise their child for them. So that's that, I guess. I feel so many flavors of worried and angry and then worried all over again. I've been around the block and it's never a great sign when the person you're with makes an enemy of your family. That's what Sperm Donair has done by painting me as an abuser and failed mother who also won't take in their baby. Sounds like Sperm Donair has cut themselves off from their own family too. So I'm worried my daughter is in a very controlling relationship with someone who convinced her to stop birth control because they think hormones are too feminizing somehow and that she needs to be fixed. But they still want me to raise their baby. I'm angry that my daughter can just hear this crap and nod along like, yeah that makes total sense. She is not stupid. I think she's love blinded. I'm sad and worried for the baby. A couple commenters suggested I wanted nothing to do with the baby because I wouldn't agree to raise it as my own. No, in a perfect world, I would want a normal grandmotherly relationship. Or at least know that the child is safe and has been adopted into a loving family. I don't care what my daughter does with her gender or her body as long as she doesn't hurt herself. I want her to be in a happy relationship with someone who values her for who she is. Sperm Donair kept using the word fix which I see as another terrible sign. It's bad all around. My house is empty. It feels like my adult daughter has run off to join up with some weird church slash cult thing who tells her that up is down. That not using birth control and not getting an abortion and then expecting others to take care of the child is a okay. Oh and that she's a problem and needs to be fixed. I texted her and said I would be there for her, but Sperm Donair was still not welcome in the house. I think I'm blocked again. She's a legal adult. I'm not sure what else I can do at this point. In my low points, Part of me thinks maybe I should agree to take the baby and then immediately make sure it's adopted into a loving home. But I get the feeling that Sperm Donair won't make that easy, and right now my daughter does what he says. Also, I'm not sure if that plan is even possible. It sounds Hollywood. I have an appointment to speak with a counselor, but the soonest I could get is April. Some of my friends think I should take the baby in either to get them away from the parents or because they think it's my duty, or both. The only silver lining in this was that they both seem sober. I don't think there's drugs involved. Am I reading this wrong? Am I the asshole here? Final update posted one hour. Ago in r slash 8 I posted another update in the comments a while back. It's on my account. Basically my pregnant daughter shut me out of her life completely and rumor had it she was living in a homeless camp with her weirdo lover out in the woods. It's a huge place and me and friends searched a few times but weren't able to find her. It's also dangerous because there aren't laws out there and the homeless shoot at ATV riders and hikers and send dogs after people who come too close to what they consider their territory. 
To be clear I don't think my daughter was part of that group, the camp is huge and full of meth addicts, sex traffickers, and drug labs. Anyway, the full story is in my account if you care. I did contact sperm donors' parents and they have all but disowned them after very much the same disturbing behavior I outlined earlier, only geared toward their younger siblings. So that sucks. Back to the new news, all this shook out a couple weeks ago, but I hesitated to post because of my own emotions and the fact I know Reddit will be all over my ass for the deep anger, shame, and disappointment I have for my daughter. I came home from grocery shopping to find a strange pregnant woman at my door. That woman used to be my daughter, but it changed so much she was like a stranger. She chatters constantly so you can't get a word in, she has several small face tattoos and, forgive me for saying this, looks like she is aged 20 years. She had been living rough. She was angry I locked her out, I changed the locks after she left, and basically expected to move back into her old room with no problem, like it was just another day from back in the winter when she lived here. Of course I wasn't going to turn her away so I guess in a way she was right. She was living in the homeless camp with the sperm donor, and I insisted she take a shower because it looked like she hadn't since leaving. She also stank bad. She had no shame about blocking my number or what she put me through by disappearing. All she wanted to talk about was the grand fate that she and sperm donor are building. That they're building a community of new people, and she went on and on and on without mentioning the baby once. I don't know how anyone can stand them, but sperm donor has multiple partners and my daughter is one of them and is perfectly happy being his brood mare. The brood mare is my verbiage. Hers is much more. Royal. Frankly, based on what she overshared, sperm donor seems like a complete sex fiend. Finally I broke in and asked and she said she had been to the doctor regularly, that was a lie, found out later, and all is well with the baby. At this point I knew she had to be on drugs. If she was awake, she was talking, and none of what she said had an end or a point. Also, a lot was from crazy town. What I got from her was that, again, she and several other ladies, and men. Somehow. Were to carry the next generation of new people. Yes, the men. Yes, biological men. Sperm donor was sort of the middle of the wheel with the spokes, was how she described it. I've met him before and I'm surprised he was able to get one girlfriend much less whatever grouping is going on now. Anyway, sometimes she said she wanted to keep the baby, but she wouldn't tell me a plan to take care of and house it, I think she expected to stay with me, and sometimes she wanted to adopt it out, but not for the good of the baby but to spread the new people. This part is going to upset the internet but the new people are apparently without gender expectations and that was why she didn't know the baby's gender yet. Oh yeah, and also some of the wheel, her group, were empathic and they could communicate their feelings through the other world. As a house guest, she was the absolute worst. It was like she had gone fair, out in the camp and clean up after herself to the point where she mostly did not even flush the toilet after using it. She ate everything, which was to expect it, but never cleaned up after herself and kept asking asking is too mild of a word, she demanded for me to take her out to restaurants. I did a couple of times because I missed her and was trying to make a connection but then once afterward took her to the store to get baby supplies, and she was weirdly detached. Sort of picked up the first thing she saw on the shelf and all the while it was yak 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 about her true family of new people and their grand fate. Anyway, I finally got out of her that she expected the baby in mid-July, which put her outside the time frame she originally gave me. I had it on my calendar. I was obsessed with the possible due date because I didn't know if she was find a baby on my doorstep or what, and yes she was under the care of a doctor. Both lies. Getting her to focus on one subject was impossible. She would only stop talking long enough to take a breath and only listen long enough to you to stop for your own before she'd launch into a new thing, usually around sperm donor, who she loved but was nowhere in sight and was chilling back at the camp with the rest of his breeding stock, or whatever. Basically I was waiting for her to come down off whatever high she was on, when she went into full-blown labor. It was a complete shit show. She was having pains but her water hadn't broken yet. At the hospital it came out that she had not been to the doctor once for the baby, there are programs in our state that cover pregnancies, so that put her at high risk so she was admitted immediately. That's when the switch flipped and she became hateful against nurses and doctors. She said the worst things and they were absolute saints in return. She also had, like, delusions of grandeur and told them she was their queen and accused them of trying to punish her. It was so wild. I can't, even describe the monster she became. So, so, so hateful. Racist, vicious, and the worst things you can say to people, she said them. She wasn't in hard labor yet so it wasn't entirely the pain. I pulled one nurse aside and told her where she had been living and that I suspected drugs though I hadn't caught her using yet. They were so professional and gave her painkillers that helped her mood, not gonna lie, they doped her up because she was acting wild. Imagine my surprise when her blood work came out clean. I wasn't there for the birth because she didn't want me in the room with her, and heaven help me I was a little relieved because I was ashamed of her behavior, but I did talk to a social worker on staff to let them know everything I did. 
The lady was very nice but couldn't speculate officially on my daughter's mental state. I said she had to be bipolar or manic or something because her behavior was not normal, but she asked if she had threatened to kill herself or harm the baby and she hadn't. They can't step in until there's a threat. Miraculously, the child was born at a good weight and healthy, and not addicted. I don't want to give too much info on them because the internet is forever and one day they may search for their own past. My daughter lucked out big time and had a normal delivery as things went. She didn't give sperm donor's name out as the father, though I did to the social worker, they can't be put on the birth certificate on my word. She up and left her baby that evening without officially checking out, without saying goodbye to me or her newborn. Because the hospital is a safe surrender point, she won't be charged for abandonment. CPS asked if I wanted to take the child and though it tore me up, I said no. There are a lot of reasons for why. A big one is I don't want to be held hostage to my daughter's whims, and especially sperm donor. I don't want to be on the hook for more children which are likely coming. Also look at my daughter. I, did my best and she still turned out this way. Maybe I shouldn't try again. I know getting a new family is almost the best thing that could have happened for the baby even with problems with the foster system, it has to be better than the camp. But I feel like dogs hit about it even now. I also suspect they'll have a sibling soon as my daughter can arrange it. I know my daughter is not well. I know she's in a cult and probably in danger and also probably an abuser herself, based on the story she casually dropped about other members. She is also a selfish liar and it is luck or the grace of God or what have you that her baby was born healthy. She is rolling the dice on her life and the life of her future children. She's sick and under a sex fiend's control and now thinks she has magic thought powers, but she has some responsibility in this, too. All the rest of the transgender stuff with her lover, and if she is NB or not from the past doesn't matter. She's an adult and is making some bad choices. It's hard for me to type out, but the way she treated the hospital staff was so cruel, seriously I had to use a thesaurus to describe it because I can't even describe fully how bad it was, it showed me that whatever else, she thinks other people are below her. It's more than the mania. I'm just there to serve her, whenever she sees fit. She knew she would be giving birth soon, so she came home and expected me to take care of her. I did, of course, because she was nine months pregnant. And the second she didn't have any more need of me, or the baby she had just given birth to, it was easy to take off again. I listened to her for days and she expressed no feelings of hope for the baby other than a vehicle to spread their movement. No worry about their future life, and no more comments on me raising them as a sibling. She made the choice to leave and go back to sperm donor's harem or wheel or whatever. Sick or not, I'm ashamed to have raised someone with these kinds of value. S. Mentally ill people aren't bad people, but she has gone beyond merely bad choices. I haven't totally written her off and she may come back to sanity, but since all indications are that I'm blocked again, I'm going to think long and hard about boundaries and possibly moving. I'm worried about one day finding a bunch of cultly weirdos on my porch. So that's it. I don't know what to do. It's not like I have the resources to pay someone to deprogram my daughter, and that sounds very Hollywood. I need a realistic goal. It's more than just a cult. She needs a checkup from the neck up and I don't have the legal standing to do anything. At least the baby is safe. That's the one bright spot. Thoughts are welcome and, forgive me, any realistic suggestions, or just tell me if I'm way off base and I'm the asshole here. This has been a hell of a year and such a spiral. A year ago I had a somewhat of a slacker teenager under my roof. Now all of this.